All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back once again to a special episode of DM Radio. Yours truly, Eric Cavanaugh here. First, a nod to Future Proof, the world's first made-for-TV webinar series. You can check your local listings. We're in a dozen markets now on TV stations all around the country, including our nation's capital, three times a week on Channel 10. You'll see this show and maybe this fall or this, this uh, winter on one of those TV stations. So let's dive right in. Preparing analytics for the AI rewrite. What on earth? Here are our guests. Mark Madsen will not be joining us today, but Jeff Hainsworth is here and yours truly. And folks, I just want to throw one quick slide up here and, and talk about this for a quick second. The great AI rewrite. Ever hear that song, Closing Time? Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. The problem is there's really no end to legacy software. We did a show a couple of years ago. There was something like sunsetting applications and other fairy tales from the enterprise because once an application gets deployed, it's very hard to take it away. Even if it's a reporting tool or an analytics tool, obviously transactional systems, it's very difficult to make them go away, to sunset them. So what you're going to have here is this amalgam of new and old. You'll have all this cool new AI stuff, and you're going to have all these old legacy systems too. But is AI going to rewrite some of these legacy systems? I think the answer is yes. We're already seeing that. We're seeing it in the ERP space. We're seeing it in the analytics space. And we'll talk even more on another webinar that's coming up about AI plus BI. I've been asked before, will AI replace BI? The short answer is no. <laughs> AI is not going to replace BI. In fact, Sammy Akbe from Inside Software, that's where Jeff Hainsworth works, he made a really interesting comment just the other day. He said that BI will be even more important in this new AI era because most of these AI models are probabilistic in nature. And so you're going to want to make darn sure that you have a deterministic system that shows you what the real numbers are for your business, whether it's sales or marketing numbers or whatever the case may be. The traditional long-standing value of BI will not go away and, in fact, will be even more important. But AI will provide a lot of context and a lot of exploratory capabilities. It's very good stuff for being able to understand what's happening and really service ideas and recommendations. So AI, it's here to stay. So is BI. It's not going away. And with that, let me stop sharing and hand it off to Jeff Hainsworth. Go ahead and share your screen and uh, take us down a little road here and folks after this we'll be recording the actual formal radio show so jeff hainsworth take it away all right sharing should be happening all, all right. good yep looks good excellent yeah so since i will be talking about logi symphony the flagship product of inside software for analytics and bi makes sense that they ground you really quickly in terms of what it does, where it focuses, just so that we're all kind of on the same page. So I thought that would make the most sense for just a brief introduction. So Logi Symphony typically falls under an embedded analytics use case, right? You, people have applications, they want to add intelligence to it. Our goal is to make your application the most intelligent person in the room, simply put. Right? One thing we are finding though that is coming up more and more though is the enterprise side of things as well. Enterprise and embedded analytics is certainly in a little bit of a convergence right now. When you get into those deep complex use cases, multiple data sources, embedding in portals, you know, multi-tenancy, even within an organization, these things do come together. So those are kind of our two major use cases that we focus on. And you're gonna see one theme, uh, which is very much about flexibility uh, when we get into this. So we were talking to an analyst the other day, and one of the things that he pointed out is that realistically, BI isn't necessarily the way things go anymore. This is more about analytics, right? And when it comes to analytics, you have different people involved. It's not one person. It's not one skill set, right? Everybody wants their own way, how they work. So that's actually one thing that really sets us apart. We are able to serve up many different interfaces depending on who needs it and embedding it, of course. So if you're looking for self-service to empower users, to make their own discoveries, get access to data, slice and dice, all those fun things, great, we provide that. If you want more like the long form reporting, I wanna be more like Excel rather than a dashboard, absolutely, right? Analysts, if you're in there and you actually wanna play around, go deep, formulas, you know, start throwing AI at it, fine. These are all very different use cases. So definitely one differentiation with Logi Symphony is that we can simply serve up different experiences and align that specifically with different people. 
Visualization is one that uh, has turned a lot of heads for us recently as well. Everybody's got the standard bar charts, line charts, you know, where we're used to seeing this in the analytics space. But we provide so much flexibility and customization here that we've got over 100 different types of visuals that you can serve, right? It's very interesting. You can get creative about different ways to storytell and to have people see insights. So another strength uh, that we've got that tends to go, let's say, under service to people. Um, layout modes is another one. Right? Since we're all about flexibility, you don't necessarily want to simply provide one type of layout. Pixel Perfect is, is a great example where if I'm building something and I want a dashboard if in my application or report, I want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned to my needs. Maybe I have some regulatory needs or I have a designer who's handing off an image that I'm going to build because that's how our application has to look. We match it perfectly. If I'm more on the mobile space and I want responsive design with things moving around or resizing or scaling to go up on a big screen TV, it's there. So full control. And not just control from what you see, but control of how people work as well. So developers coming in and you know doing that analysis type role potentially, very different than someone who's just coming in and seeing what's important to their job function. So you can cater it right down from how users authenticate to what features are available within the application, right down to the dashboard filtering and user-based security that they're gonna see. So control, control, control. And next, customization. When I say embedded analytics and those you know, heavy enterprise use cases where customization is king, this application is built API first. You can customize anything. You can plug in whatever you want. You need new visualization, build a plug is in. You want to export a certain way, go for it. Right? And it's also not locking you into any particular ecosystem, which is nice. Um, for example, you, know, you go with uh, someone like a Google, you're on their cloud. You go with Microsoft, you're on Azure. We're happy to be on premise. We're happy to live in those clouds. We're, there's no vendor lock in here. Uh, another one that's really important to us, of course, is data connectivity. Right? One of the companies within the Insight software data and analytics is Simba. Simba provides data connectivity for most of the industry. If you have you've used any of the major data providers, Databricks, Google, right? Simba provides that connectivity to other vendors to get at that data. They are within the Insight software wheelhouse which gives us a really nice advantage. If we have a customer coming to us with a potentially tricky data situation or they need to connect to, you know, maybe something I've never even heard of. We have that in our back pocket at any time, including connectivity to just about anything. A couple of pretty cool patents as well that are worth talking about. One of them is data sharpening. So if you're on the self-service side and you're streaming large data sources, you don't necessarily want to be sit there waiting on the self-service side. What we do is actually allow sort of a low resolution grab of that data. And we can start essentially augmenting it and making it more HD as the user's working with the data. So they're not slowing down. So it's a patent on this like micro querying technology that we've got. Pretty cool. It's also an in-memory caching engine. So if you want to have the data more warmed up and ready to go for self-service. I think you're probably seeing a theme here. It really is all about that flexibility so that we can solve these complex use cases. One of the last ones I want to show, of course, is uh, building your own data workflows. There is a lightweight ETL tool behind here. Do transformations, data prep. You want to throw R or Python analysis or AI work on top of your data. It's there. Right? And one of the things you may have heard us talk about in the past uh, when Eric and I were together was data can be the crux of any of these projects. So it's great to have the tools to get you over that. And of course, used by many vendors. I'm not going to drain the slides here, but both on the ISV side as well as the enterprise side. So that's your quick crash course on what is Logi Symphony, if you hear me mention it. And we can go from there. All right, excellent. And yeah, the data sharpening, that came from Zoom data, right? Correct. Yeah, one of the things that I was hoping to surface is there's a lot of different products under the hood here that have sort of come together to build out the ecosystem within Insight Software. So you're right. absolutely right on calling that out. Yeah, I remember because what Zoom Data mm -hmm. was able to do is you could almost like pierce a very large data set and then pull back information immediately and start building a visualization on the fly as opposed right. to waiting for the whole thing to be consumed and then showing you a visualization, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's very good when you're trying to vet a data set and determine do I want to use this 
in my project? Do I want to use this information to make my case about a particular subject? It allows you to very quickly sample a very large data set and understand what's underneath the covers and then make the determination, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that idea that you can have it get more and more HD, like I think that's the best way to think about it, right? You got your SD picture that comes in quickly, sort of like a Netflix streaming, and then it just starts to get more and more detailed as you need it. Yeah. So it'll give you that performance, right? It, it really does suck to have to wait up front. <laughs> we don't well, want to do that. We, well, we talked about that on the last webinar with Jennifer yeah. Sturrup, where she said she'd go into the canteen and see people drinking coffee. And she's like, oh, what are you up to? I'm just waiting for my spreadsheet to load. You're like, okay, yeah. that doesn't sound good. Exactly. If you're killing time. We have a couple of good questions already, by the way, before we start our radio show here. Uh, one attendee is asking, could it be containerized to run from anywhere? So these different applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do allow for, you know, Kubernetes is obviously the most popular uh, container deployment, right, Docker. So, yeah, we have that scaling capability. So even though I say there's no vendor lock-in from a, you know, which cloud you have to use for this application, right. there's no reason you can't use those same tools even on an on-premise environment. Yeah. But great question. Yeah. And another question, does it support NLP-based visual production could be used by business users for ad hoc analysis? I think the short answer there is yes, it does, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's not much limit there in terms of how we're going to visualize it. Right. Cool. Well, let's do our radio show, folks. Stand by. Here we go. <clears throat> 